The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All right. Go with your screen here. Let's see. What do you got? What do you got? Got several several links were set today. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. So first news link is Cake Wallet is now in beta for Windows. So if you are the unfortunate person, uh, and I feel very bad for you to be using a Windows operating based operating system, then you now have the ability to use Cake Wallet on there. Which I know is still a lot of people not trashing on anybody, uh, <laughs> but Cake Wallet is finally uh, working on Windows. It hadn't been for the longest time due to the Monero libraries not being compatible. But um, this build has some newer Monero libraries that allows well, more like a wrapper for the Monero uh, C++ code, more like a, a wrapper. It allows it to work on Windows now, so you can now test it out mm. in beta. Go have fun with that. Very cool. Yeah, that one's big. Uh, and next up, we have somebody created a bounty for making a Havino mobile application. And at the moment, it has 3.36 yes. Monero uh, in the bounty. That. And you can add to this bounty right now if you want to see this become a thing. I do imagine this will be a bit a bit of an undertaking uh, to do, um, but it's definitely possible. So... Yeah, if you we want gotta, to we got to get that going for XMR Bazaar too. Holy shit. Oh, for sure. I'm sure XMR yeah. Bazaar at the moment works fine as a as a web app like on, on the mm -hmm. phone, but a native yes. application is always nicer if possible. Yeah. That's Avino, of course say. is not possible right now um on a mobile device it has to be on the desktop. So mm -hmm. yeah, go donate to that if you want to see that happen. And Binance founder CZ He's going to the clink. Receive support from crypto community as jail term starts. Oh, Once wow. he completes his four-month sentence at Lampong Prison, Zhao plans to resume his involvement in cryptocurrency. He gets a measly four months. Hmm. So he started in his prison sentence in a low-security federal prison in Lampong, California. Low security means the type of prison where prisoners have the most amount of freedom because they are not considered dangerous and are trusted not to escape. Okay. Yep. I, I I missed that story this week. Yep. So he's he's actually going to jail. Short short period of time, but he how is. long is he sent? What's his sentence? How long? Four months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's hilarious. A low security prison. Four months hanging out. Okay. El Salvador's pro Bitcoin president Nayib Bukele sworn in for a second term, probably unsurprisingly. Wow, so it's already been five years since he started his presidency. Um, it's been kind of a while. Uh, and a lot of people look up to him as like some kind of like Bitcoin superhero. But I mean, really, the, the system they were pushing on citizens was a, a terrible custodial uh, solution that wasn't even really Bitcoin. So I don't even know. Yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was Bitcoin by mandate, which is literally yeah. what and it was like Chivo, is. <laughs> which is this custodial system that's not even really using Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, but interesting to see. Next up, we've got a tweet from Sully Agorist. Andreas Antonopoulos now says we can safely increase the block size after blocking me and many others saying the same thing years ago. In that, I'm a bit of a contrarian because I would say in 2017, we had a partial agreement to scaling with SegWit, which also in practice, increase the block size to four megabytes. It's now been seven years. Could we afford, from a bandwidth and storage perspective, another increase in the block size? Now, that's heresy to say in some circles. And for me, it's a simply a pragmatic question. Um, have computers and bandwidth uh, increased to a point where we could increase the block size without damaging decentralization? I think the answer to that is yes. So is the narrative finally changing around block sizes? Oh, looks like you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, the, the, they're finally coming around. Andres, uh, I guess he was never, you know, that that's a reasonable take. 
Um, so I guess he would he would like Monero's dynamic block size, where it just naturally increases in size with demand and as technology improves, rather than having to, <laughs> you know, get a committee of people to agree on it every time. Great, Jay. Even even larger blocks is still an improvement over dynamic block sizes, but dynamic block sizes really is just kind of the best. Um, yeah. So next up, uh, Havino Rito offer book currently at 272 XMR. Most popular methods are cash by mail, both buy and sell offers, 82 XMR. Things are going to explode when Cash App, Venmo, PayPal are added. Some issues need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's a lot of traction right now on Havino Rito, where there's a lot of offers going on for buying and selling, which is cool to see. And of course, some of the most popular methods people want to use to pay aren't even on there yet. Once they add those, it'll probably be way more orders. Wow. Exciting. Awesome. That's amazing. So from doing Fed time, lucky winner of 79,000 XMR jackpot on the world's largest darknet market. Arc type won't have to split their winnings with the federal government in the guise of taxes. All right, let's take a look at this article here. Archetype dark net market is currently one of the largest markets in the world for narcotics. In a thrilling turn of events, the first lottery winner in 10 weeks has emerged, claiming a staggering prize of 514.865 XMR. This is the current value translates to about $79,252.95 USD. Crazy. And the lucky winner, whose identity remains confidential to the the privacy-centric nature of Monero, is believed to be an ordinary individual who regularly participated in the lottery. Uh, so yeah, so awesome. that's insane. Uh, yeah, they're Monero only archetype, right? Possibly. I've, yeah, yeah. I, they're 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 Monero only. I imagine they would be as many. Yeah. Dark Nick markets. You for for for, re, for research purposes, I did go and look at some some marketplaces. You know, when we were building XMR Bazaar, might as well look at the people that that do it well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, archetype was is well designed nice interface i don't use it uh but i was looking at it and yeah they're monero only and that's crazy that they have this uh lottos where and like typically when you win like a lottery i mean this insane percentage of that gets taken away and goes to the government yeah but in this case auto auto taxed he actually gets what he won right he's not having some of his prize maybe stolen from him whoever whoever it is whichever hand on that is yeah it's it's governments like to be the only ones that can legally uh do a lottery and then they take you know whatever 50 percent of the funds raised and they, they sell people on a dream yep it do be like that all right yep. uh this tweet for some reason the uh twitter auto translate isn't showing up um and I'm not quite that good at Spanish, but uh, basically it says, here's a photo with Sam Altman uh, with wonderful meeting about AI and enormous possibilities that a libertarian Argentina offers. Uh, don't know so, what to yeah. do about that or say about that. He's, he's hanging out with the world's coin guy. <laughs> not basically. A, I mean, a little scary CIA plant potentially with, you know, AI guy who's tied in with the government. I mean, does it seem like that surprising? <laughs> I, I know people have their own thoughts on Javier Belay, but uh, I, I don't think he's the most organic person, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, he has he hasn't taken very strong actions in in support of crypto. No, it seems like more yeah. he's been trying to support the U.S. interests, like oh, we're gonna make the dollar be the main currency and whatever. A tweet from from Aaron Day. This guy is the standard bear for BTC now. BTC isn't freedom money. BTC is a number go up cult that has paved the way for CBDC and distracted people from innovation and P2P digital cash. At the end of the day, I think there'll be K. There'll be know your customer. This there'll be anti money laundering. That there'll be some tax regulations. There'll be some back and forth over what you can do. There'll be concerns about privacy. That's why I look at Bitcoin and I think 
it's pretty clear if if the use case is store of value well like 7.8 billion people on earth need a store of value and probably the value of that is 100 to 300 trillion dollars right that's enough that's good if the use case is currency replace the dollar and the euro that seems like it's i mean that's just intentionally inflammatory we don't need to replace the euro and the dollar the bankers are going to be upset about replacing the euro and the dollar I don't think it's going to happen and not in the next decade or two decades. So we don't need to get wrapped around the axle on that. And if the use case is medium of exchange and payment, like we don't really need to pay for a pizza with it. We don't need to pay for a Starbucks coffee with it. I mean, that's already solved by Alibaba and PayPal and Square and Apple Pay and Amazon and Google Pay. And it's, you know, they can be regulated and Visa and MasterCard. So so you can leave Visa and MasterCard alone. You can leave the dollar and the euro alone. We can agree to pay taxes. We can, uh, you know, we cannot. Good grief. So what's what's mm. exactly the point of Bitcoin then, Mr. Mr. Sailor? Um, this guy's <laughs> completely lost. He never knew the plot. He never knew the plot. He didn't lose the plot. Well, I mean, he's, he, never, he's, never had it. he never had it. And I don't think he ever wanted it. I mean, I think he's no. there to. Kind yeah, he of figured like, out he figured out how to make a lot of money off of he did for sure bullying people but yeah he's not he's not good he's not a cypherpunk guys in any in any way shape nope. or form crypto anarchist not even close yeah anybody who's in, in bitcoin and doesn't realize why that's the most valuable aspects of this whole experiment they just don't get it yeah what's next all right Next, we have a chart from My Nimbox, which is a mm. privacy-friendly hosting service. And as you can see, they, they put out a chart of the amount of, of payments they received per type. And so far, Monero is 83% of all the payments they've received uh, in May of 2024. Uh, and Bitcoin is 17% and Lightning is non-existent. That's fantastic. People are, are choosing Monero. When they want to make payments, you know, when they want to pay for something uh, privately, super, super fast, very and it's cheap even to send, on chain and private every time. Awesome, cool to see. Nice. Yep. And there's a couple more links I'm pulling up right now. So this one you sent. Oh, Doug. this is Ever? yeah. This is crazy. This is crazy. So this. This is a, an update on the case with Samurai. This guy was out outside of, I guess, the beginning of the, the, the first hearing on Samurai Wallet with uh, Keon Rodriguez. Who wow, shall I play the defendant? Samurai Dev is Keon. Yeah, play, go ahead and play. Everybody, uh, we're coming to you live here on behalf of uh, Bitcoin Magazine. We're here in the Southern District of New York. We just left the United States of America versus Keon Rodriguez hearing, um, which was the first hearing in which uh, the defense counsel and Mr. Rodriguez um, have appeared at. Uh, and this is regarding the sealed indictment with charges against Keon Rodriguez and uh, William Hill with a conspiracy to commit money laundering and then to um, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business. Uh, the defense, uh, the counsel for Rodriguez had changed from the last time this meeting was scheduled, last time it got canceled. Uh, his defense goes by the name of Mr. Krauss. Um, it was acknowledged right away that Hill is still in Portugal. Uh, the prosecution mentioned that there has been an extradition request put in to bring Hill from Portugal back to the United States, but there's been no update on that yet. Um, the government or the prosecution stated that uh, they're still rolling out discovery, that this hasn't happened yet, that they've requested a two terabyte hard drive from a Rodriguez. From what we can understand, this is still in Rodriguez's possession, um, and also that they haven't extracted all of the information on the devices that they do, that the prosecution or the government does have in their possession yet. So everything that they have taken from Rodriguez, they haven't gone through it all yet, and they don't have it ready for discovery. Um, but but the prosecution did say that there will be substantial discovery, quote unquote, based on what they have looked at, the information that they they have uh, viewed on the computers that they do have or the devices that they do have. Um, the government made it clear, I may have mentioned this already, that they're not going to wait until Hill comes back to proceed with this trial. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway from today was that uh, the defense made a point to note that 
Um, Lummis, Senator Lummis and Senator Wyden have sent letters to Supreme Court Justice Merrick Garland stating that it's not against the law for a software developer um, to be guilty of such a statute. They're making the argument that essentially it's unwitting for the law to be used against somebody who was just writing code or creating software that they'd be then subject to, uh, to being money transmitter businesses um, or committing money laundering. And this is just based on what the lawyer said, so please pardon me if I'm not reporting that perfectly. What's most important to note here is that it was reported that Lummis and Wyden, Senators Lummis and Wyden, have uh, submitted a letter to Merrick Garland, a Supreme Court justice. Um, Mr. Rodriguez, while we're waiting for the next hearing to take, or I'm sorry, while we're waiting for the next hearing, which is actually, I believe, scheduled now for September 4th, 2024 at 11.30 a.m., Mr. Rodriguez will remain in home incarceration. Um, there was no comment from the lawyer at the end. And um, over the course of the hearing, the prosecution on several occasions mentioned that they wanted this to be a speedy trial. Uh, we did have a chance to speak with Mr. Rodriguez right after uh, the hearing adjourned. Um, he seemed to be in relatively good spirits. He wanted to say thank you to everybody who has been con contributing to his legal defense fund. Um, and yeah, we will continue reporting on this. We'll be, we'll be back here in September for the next, uh, the next hearing. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hmm. Crazy. Crazy times, guys. This this is what the then they fight you stage looks like. People getting arrested. Open source devs. Um, yeah, we'll 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 see what happens. I mean, I I don't know. Uh, Tornado cash, right? Was was is is probably more more clear cut than samurai. Um, I mean, Tornado cash, I think is. is there's better arguments there for why it should even be more, cons more legal, right? Con yeah, be because I mean, less it was... argument for illegality in Tornado Cash than there is with the Samurai instance. Uh, but Tornado Cash, we saw a decision come down. In, it was in Dutch in courts, Europe. wasn't it? Yeah, in the Dutch courts, but we haven't seen a decision yet in the U.S. Right, so we'll see which way the u.s goes i guess i guess the samurai thing is going to get heard first I, I don't know i'm not following the tornado too well on the other side i don't know where that's currently at but um it hasn't that case hasn't been heard yet in the u.s but i think i think the samurai well unfortunately is a is a more a slightly more difficult one right i don't know what do you think tux yeah, I think it is a messier case because of like everything involved with the fact that they're I, the main the main thing is that they're making money off of it and they're gonna try right. and bend the FinCEN guidelines and be like, oh, those are like really legal guidelines, and they're gonna try and make it so that even though it's non custodial, you they're still making money and they're still they they're gonna try and change the definition and be like, oh yeah, they are moving money and making money off of moving other people's money. So now we're going right. to right, and and they're making the money off the transactions themselves when people go yep. to obfuscate and use their service. Um, granted, yeah, it's you know they're they're never holding the funds, they're never in custody. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it's going to be tough. I've read, you know, obviously, we no, nobody should want that to happen. Nobody should be looking at that from the standpoint of a Monero user. Be like, oh well, that that would be good good for Monero. And it's not it's not good because it just gets them closer to Monero. Monero is more abstract, more much more protected legally than than anything that's been attacked thus far because it's literally just open source code that's being run by decentralized blockchain, you know, decentralized users. There's there is no company, there is nobody taking a fee. Uh, there's nobody profiting from running Monero. Uh, I mean other than the miners, but there's no centralized entity. Uh, so, but that being said, we don't want them to get a step closer. And with with this, they would do. Plus, obviously, we wouldn't want to see this happen to these devs who align with our vision for a world where people can transact without censorship, without being surveilled. So, we wouldn't want to see that happen to these guys for sure. Yep. All right. Do we have one last thing? I don't know. We have we, one we last good? thing. Oh, sure. All right. U.S. legislation has been drafted to classify not reusing Bitcoin addresses as mixing. 
There's also efforts to force unhosted wallet providers to collect user info for taxes. Coin Center does vital work to fight this and to protect privacy tech. I suggest donating today. Uh, so I guess this is the context here. I'll go ahead and go to this article. Um, comments to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network on proposal of special measure regarding convertible virtual currency mixing as a class of transaction of primary money laundering concern. Yeah, this is this is, this this is, is yes. Yeah, this but, is so, what, what is the well? The, what is the tweet essentially saying? You're from it though. The, the two things is that they're essentially attacking. Essentially saying that they are trying to classify not reusing Bitcoin addresses as mixing, which is something that like everybody wow. does in Bitcoin. Um, it's just kind of like it's ingrained. It's like don't reuse your Bitcoin addresses because you're you're you know mo losing out on privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and unhosted wallet providers, which is essentially non-custodial wallets. So that would include anything from Samurai Wallet to Cake Wallet to uh, like Stack Wallet, Monterujo, any of those. Those are non-custodial. Yeah. So those are considered unhosted wallet providers because nobody's hosting the wallet. How, um, so how would they even how would they even collect this info? They right. would want the companies of develop who would, who develop the apps to implement like information inside the app that would collect data on the user. So they, right, they're going to try and put, if they were to go that route, they would have to put pressures on the companies that develop the apps. And that's where something like, like having an app be open source is helpful and having mm -hmm. like a decentralized team to work on something is helpful, uh, even though it's a lot harder to do, mm -hmm. uh, where there's no single place that you can kind of force like a company to do something. Like, unfortunately for Cake Wallet, Cake Wallet is primarily developed by a company, mm -hmm. Cake Labs. Um, so if the government made some legislation or regulation requiring us to implement some feature to collect data for tax stuff, then we would, we would just, we wouldn't do it. We would just go out of business instead. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the fortunate part is that all these wallets in the ecosystem are open source. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. We'd still, we'd still have, we'd still have wallets. We'd still be able to access, uh, open source wallets that we can download and use. Uh, but still, that would be, once again, we would never want to see that that breach be taken. Uh, that would be insane. That would be insane. I'm going to read this top part here because it's actually interesting. The USA Patriot Act empowered FinCEN to designate, dude, everything goes back to the, the Patriot Act, <laughs> to, to designate to, four to. very different things as primary money laundering concerns, jurisdictions, financial institutions, classes of transactions, and types of accounts. This rulemaking is unprecedented because in the 23 years since the 311 power was created by Congress, it has never once been used by FinCEN to identify an entire class of transactions as a PMLC, which stands for uh something here a mm. primary money laundering concern that's the pmlc mm -hmm. uh, given the novelty of this type of designation there is no existing body of law to aid reporting entities in determining how the scope and limits of any given class of transactions should be understood there's also no body of law to inform innocent americans of their rights and opportunities for hearing should their transaction be wrongly subjected to a pmlc designation and should they suffer the serious collateral economic and reputational consequences that inevitably attend such a designation therefore this rule must be especially clear and narrow narrowly tailored to avoid intended consequences as we discussed below as drafted is not which is which is typical the government's like with the whole thing with the vincent guidance they kind of just made it up in the air purposefully so they can kind mm -hmm. of bend it how they want to later down the road uh it's unfortunate but crazy that's where they're trying to go